everyone from me, Brent Graham of goodforthegame.co.za. It's uh, sort of early afternoon on Sunday, and I'm sure many of you, like me, are recovering from an incredible World Cup semi final between England and South Africa. For Bok fans, man, those first 65 minutes were tough. I don't know how we got up for the win, but we'll take a closer look at that now. If you do enjoy your betting and you enjoy your rugby, and you, for that matter, your sporting previews, hit the subscribe button and the like button. It does help the channel a lot. Before we get into what I want to call a perfect last 13 minutes there for the Springboks, let's just have a look at some key moments in the lead up to the match and in the match itself. Team selection, should Rassi have freshened the squad up? I'd have to suggest... Yes, I did think in midweek that he would make a few changes. I was quite surprised when he picked an unchanged 23. No doubt about it, the box looked a little bit flat for this one. The first half introduction of Pollard was massive. It was a big call by the box management. Not easy to pull a player off like Marnie, who's done so well for you after, after such a short time. But I think at the end of the day, they just assessed the conditions and realized this was going to be a, a game that was going to be one on kicks and uh, tactics rather than creativity. The early introduction of the bench also speaks to the fact that the team selection perhaps should have been freshened up because it certainly made a difference when the bench came on and very rare to see the likes of Etzebeth and Khaleesi going off together so early in the match. In the 58th minute, there was a key moment for me trailing by nine points. The box survived an attacking scrum. And I tell you what, if England had scored there, I think it would have been absolutely race over. Then in the 63rd minute, just an interesting one for me, England knocked it on near the halfway line. And I think the box should have stopped playing and just taken the scrum, but they try to play the advantage and they actually end up getting the ball to uh, Johnny May via LaRue cross kick and that nearly cost us big time there. Right, let's get into the analysis itself. 13 minutes to go here. We've got England leading by 15-6. There's a scrum penalty to South Africa near the halfway line. Pollard, he finds an excellent touch in the corner. And I just want to make mention of that because in the first half, one thing Marnie's game wasn't quite on and his kicking to touch was nowhere near the standard we've seen in the past. I thought it could have been put down to conditions. But anyway, Pollard steps up and absolutely nails this one into the corner. That set up a try. Dion Faree doing his bit there as well. And a brilliant try by Snayman. He was simply superb off the bench. What an absolute beast of a man. The Pollard conversion, well, it was pretty straightforward, but critical because we had to get to within three points of winning the match. England then leading 15-13 after 70, uh, 70 minutes. They claim the kickoff. Quacha Smith steps in and makes the tackle out to touch. We win the line out. Here's another critical moment for me. Uh, Fuff does a bit of a loose pass to Pollard. He has to take it well over his head. An error there, like a knock-on or missing the ball totally and it goes dead or whatever, could have been absolutely crucial. Brilliant from Pollard. He clears downfield and, and takes the pressure off for the time being. Stewart returns the kick, challenges, and Itoji manages to collect the ball and run. But South Africa weather that storm as well. I just want to make mention of Stewart. Absolutely superb game. I think it would have been between him and Owen Farrell for man of the match had South Africa not come back and won. Billy LaRue calls a mark in the 73rd minute. That was overkicked. I think it was uh, Farrell that kicked that one. Uh, he manages to get the mark. We call the scrum. And uh, this is what many of us were paying to uh, even a minute earlier when Pollard took the mark. I think many of us thought they'd call the scrum. They do that. They're pushing, obviously, for the penalty. They don't get it, but they get a lot of forward momentum and kick nice and deep. Stewart then returns the kick, and this is the third mistake, I would say, that England made in this period as far as kicks go. You had the two that went too far for the marks. This kick didn't go far enough, although Stewart did get his hands to it. He knocked it on, and now he had a chance to scrum and force a penalty. The scrum team to take forever. There was a reset, and eventually the penalty came, and Pollard, who else, steps up to nail an absolutely brilliant kick. Ice running through that guy's veins, no doubt about it. Right, South Africa now lead after 78 minutes and uh, of course the game is far from done the 79th minute kickoff received in the 22 and we set up one phase i was just praying at the stage we wouldn't try and play the last two minutes out you know just recycling and recycling because the penalty would have come i have no doubt but fortunately the box wanted very interesting it looked like faf was going to pass to pollard something happened that made him change his mind and he then clears to the halfway and i did mention on twitter i thought this was one of the key moments in those last couple of minutes because uh, you know, if, he, if he'd only cleared it sort of like halfway between the, the 10 meter and the 22 or something, England would have been in a very good position to force a penalty. Instead, they had to run at us to try and get a bit closer. And then there was about two minutes of play between the two 10 meter lines. Superb defense by South Africa. England 
brilliant handling, running everything at us. But finally, in the 81st minute, the knock-on came. I must be honest, I was not watching the clock at that stage. I was still telling everyone I was with, guys, guys, we've still got to win the scrum. We've still got to win the scrum. And then I looked up and they were shaking hands. It's just another uh, story. We were watching with friends. And uh, when uh, the, the one lady went out, we noticed that the box seemed to perform better. So her husband suggested she go out for the last 10 minutes of the game, which she did. She actually did it willingly. And uh, we heard a voice towards the end saying, can I come out now? And she was relieved she'd done her bit for South Africa, who then won 16-15. Just before we go into the betting, great weekend for our newsletter. We were on the anytime drop goal. What a drop goal by Farrell. I've got a few strange looks running around the room celebrating that. And, of course, under four and a half tries absolutely trotted up. So do join us in the battle against the bookmakers down below. Right, that brings us uh, to the betting then. On the final, this is at the World Sports Betting New Zealand, South Africa. I can tell you, very slight favourites, New Zealand bookies are struggling to separate them. They're 11 to 10 to win the match. And I just want to go down here as well. The points line is going to be interesting, 42 and a half. I would say if conditions are good, uh, we're going to get a bit of a different game to the one we saw against England. I can't see New Zealand allowing us to do what England did to us in, in terms of tactics. New Zealand are going to try and loosen this one up. So 42 and a half, quite an interesting points line. Let me know your comments below. And yes, once again, I'll just let the slide do the talking. You know what to do.